डेट टाइम फॉर्मूला ओके ओके सो इन डेट टाइम फॉर्मूला एज आई हैव टोल्ड यू दैट देर इज अ फॉर्मेट फॉर डेट ओके द एक्चुअल फॉर्मेट फॉर डेट विच यू कन्वर्ट इन जनरल फॉर्मेट इट शोज अ नंबर सो इट इज द नंबर ऑफ डेज and when you you can directly do any calculations in that equal to select this one and type any number so basically it will add number in days because it is a number the i got a question um are are you, are is excel able to um have it in milliseconds i know it can like once you i know this is a date but once we go into time is it mm -hmm. can we convert it into milliseconds milli yes i guess there is a option for millisecond okay yes let me show you i guess because when there is a format for millisecond time second Uh, in custom number format, I have somewhere I have seen milli about millisecond. Okay, because sometimes when I uh, get stock quotes, they're they're um, in milliseconds, and sometimes I'm not able to get all the information because it only goes the smallest. It goes in seconds. Okay, okay. So. Uh, I will search this and I'll tell you tomorrow about this millisecond and what can okay. we do with millisecond. So, so it is a date format and as I told you, date you can directly and uh, add because uh, it's a number actually. Like date when you turn like time when you convert time to general format, so it shows you some numbers. A decimal with decimal places. So if you try to add something in that, so it shows it will be added in before decimal. So that's why there is no impact on time here. The basic panda is what is this actually? Uh, this is your Uh, total hours uh, in one day there is 24 hours so this value is divided by 24 so if you want to add one hour into that time so you basically have to do one by 24 then you able to do any calculation there it will add the decimal values of R there. Likewise, if you want to add seconds, so you know, uh, in minutes, you know there is 60 minutes in every hour, so you have to divide with that value. So that will add a minute. Likewise for second also. So, we have a date here. Now we want to extract day, month and year the help of formula. How we will do? For day we have day formula. You select the date and you will get the day. For month we have month formula. Oh okay that's handy. For month we have month formula and for year we have year formula. So you can get the value individual. After that for combining them you have a date formula. Which takes year, month, day as a parameter. So take year from there, month from here, day from there. So that will be combined again. Okay. Okay. Now let's talk about some calculations. So as you know, day you can directly add. Okay, like I have to add five days. 
So you can just click on that with plus symbol. You can add easily. Okay. But let's talk about month. How uh, we are going to add two months here now. So in months, what are the consequences? We can't divide. We can't multiply by with thirty because every month has individual number of days. So there is a formula for that. That is called E day. E day. So I'm choosing the date or any uh, this date or this date. This date I choose. Then with comma it asks me for months. How many months you want to add? I have two months. Okay. I've given from there. So you will get value converted to date format. Then you will get two months has been added in this date. Also, oh, it's two months from April. Yes. Okay. May June. Okay. So uh, now I have to add year. I want to add two years in this date. So what I'll do? I can use e date formula also. How I can choose the start date and number of months are same, so I can multiply by with twelve. Okay. Okay. What does the e stand for? The e date. E date is for adding months only. Okay, but what does the e stand for? Do you know, like the e? I, I, sometimes it usually has a meaning. Uh, e date. Uh, Let's see his help. I don't know actually. E date. I think uh, E date calculate maturity days. No, I don't. I don't think so. There is something meaning of that E. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. So now I am want to add in this date. Five days, two months, two years. What else I can do? I can use the date formula also. I can take the year from here plus year from here. I can do calculation in parameter also. So I don't need to do anything difficult. I can choose month from here plus month from here. Then year. So the date formula also already has the e day in it. E, e date, what? What? Yeah. Um, but the e date, it's only used for adding months. E date for adding. So months. when you, yeah. So when you're adding years and months and days, mm -hmm. then the 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 date formula also already has the e date built in then for the adding of the months. Yes, e date has uh, built in months actually. It is a formula for, for the date format. Yes, yes, yes. For any okay. date format, not for the formula only. Uh, any date you can give it. Okay. So it will add months. So that's how we do calculations on date. We have some other formulas also, uh, which you have, which will help you to calculate even more better. If you have any date. Like I have first year, any of the date and two fab fourteen. So if you want to know the last day of that month, so you can use E O month. That means end of month. Okay. So you have to choose start date and. Here is a month parameter. You can give zero only. Okay. So you will get the last day, last day of that day. Okay. That EO month I have used in that calendar format also. Attendance monitoring system. Okay. So okay. Th this parameter, if you uh, give one here. So it will increase one month. Twenty-eight. 
because it's a generally it is showing you the fab arrays. Okay. Okay. To add two months. Okay. Now let's suppose you have been in of an uh, government office or any office on first March two thousand fifteen, and uh, they ask you, you have given some request. They ask you to come after twenty business days, working days. So we have function work day for evaluating <coughs> working days. That what date will be there after these twenty business days or working days? So we will choose the start date, then comma days working days. Then we have option a list of holiday. We can choose a list of holiday also. Suppose I am choosing this day field. Okay, so they it will showing me that of twenty business day there is twenty seventh March. List of holiday means let's suppose on third March there was a government holiday. Okay. Okay. It skips Saturday and Sunday. Okay, but. You, if you use 2010, 2013, there is a formula workday dot intl. So there is a option for choosing this uh, uh, Saturday, Sunday, or Sunday only, Monday only. The vacations, you, the holiday, you can choose by uh, the options there. Okay. So in 2007, it is by default Saturday and Sunday. Hmm. Like here, I show you that how it is for work. We have work day or work day. Dot intl. This part of it. So you can give start date, then days. How many days? After then for weekends you have this section. You can choose according to you. that you want Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Monday, Monday, Tuesday. Then you have Sunday only, Monday only. Then you have list of holiday. Okay. Then let's suppose uh, if uh, the same office shows you that. Uh, you want to know that between two dates, how many working days are there? So you have the reverse formula also, net work days. Okay, net work days. Choose start date, end date, and list of holidays. Okay, there is always a difference of one there. It shows you the exact working days. That this much business days you are having in between. Okay. Okay. Now, let's go with. Oh, one second. So let's do it with something with time. So I have entered this much of this time here. So for hour, minute, and second, let's change the format also so that it will be visible in seconds forward. As well. So for our we have our formula 
R formula. For minute, we have minute formula. For second, we have second formula. And guess for combining? Time formula. Okay, you can choose R, minute and seconds. Yeah. Apply the same format here. So if you want to add hours, minute and seconds, so you can use the uh, same method we have used in day, time, this hour plus this hour. Then for minute, this minute and this minute. For second, this minute e plus this minute. So you can use this formula. Okay. Now we can add uh, manually also. Like I want to add this uh, thing without time formula. So how will I do? this time plus first I need to add hours so 2 hours divided by 24 okay then we need to add minute so minute divided by Uh, 24 multiplied by 60 okay then we have seconds so we will choose seconds in, in bracket in bracket divided by 24 multiplied by 60 multiplied by 60 same time okay okay now you know the basic funda of calculation in time okay so let's suppose we have some guys And we are having in out time of those like he comes from 9.20 am comes from 8 10 am then one guy left at 5.45 One guy left at seven. Oh, seven thirty. So now we want to give overtime to them. Two hundred, yeah, or twenty dollars per hour. Okay. After eight hours, after eight hours, twenty dollar for an extra. So now, now I have to calculate that uh, how much extra hours he has done. So what I will do? First, I need to extract the total hours. So I will use our formula from the latest and minus hour okay. so I will get the total hours mm. ok it is in time format so it's converted to the there are 8 hours 
and here it is 11 hours so now I can apply if formula that A or I can use simply minus 8 here ok so extra 3 hours then simply we need to do what multiplied by 20 ok 60 dollars over time So that, that's how we uh, calculate with time, date and time. Okay, yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Mm. Now let's see whether we have some more formulas important or not. One more formula is there. Week number. Week num. Serial number. So it will show you the week number of the year. Like first January, it is first week. Then it is second week. If it is third week, not for the month. It is for whole year. A week. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, uh, this much for we uh, we are having this much formula for date and time. Okay. Now let's uh, do something with maths formula. Maths and trigonometry. It's these functions are very easy. I tell you. Uh, the function like Do they have the statistical functions? Stat statisticals, yes, statical, statics but uh, there are a few functions of like average and uh, like average there are okay. So here are, we are having some numbers with some negative values. So what I want to do, I want to add all the numbers whether they are negative or positive. It should consider this negative one as positive. So we have a formula ABS means absolute okay. so this formula returns the value in positive whether the value are negative or positive okay. this is ABS formula Then we have two more formulas. Ceiling and floor. Like I have some packets to make. I want to make some packets. And in each packet, I will may uh, I will put seven items. Okay. So let's see how it is just for capping. When you give a number and the significance of the number, significance means the total. So it will continue that value till then the value. After that, it multiplied with the same value it adds that value floor also does same but floor will not complete the will not show the value till then that completion okay 
like you uh, somebody has I just divide by 7 to the both functions then I can relate with an example now I can build a query that uh, someone who has ordered 5 items so how many card uh, how many boxes I need to send so till 1 to 7 I need to send one box only ok there is a capping then somebody ordered 11 items so I need to send two boxes there ok so that's how and uh, we can calculate that how many complete boxes we are having so till 18 we have two complete boxes like till 9 we have one complete box likewise we can relate with any example ok so there is a capping concept here ok so it's good for inventory management huh oh, so this this is good for inventory management uh, management uh, yes you can use uh, yeah, like inventory inventory management yes 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 inventory management yes now we have even odd sometimes we do we have even odd formula so it returns the even value nearest even value and nearest odd value ok now we want to know the factorial do you know about factorial what is factorial we have fact function it shows you 120 what is exactly 5 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1 in reverse order it takes whole numbers and multiply it with each other it shows you the factorial we have one okay. more function fact double which, which skips one digit like first it will take this one then multiply it by skipping one digit this one and again skipping one digit yeah. And we have two formulas GCD and LCM. Greatest common divisible and lower lowest common multiplier. So if we choose two numbers 12 and 15. So which is the greatest common divisor? So I choose this one and these two numbers. So it is 3. 3 can be fully divided. 3 can fully divide the 12 as well 15. Okay, yeah, yeah. Likewise, we have LCM, lower common multiplier. So 60 and no, no, 3 and 5 LCM So 15 is the lowest common multiplier 6 LCM GCD concept you have also learned in your schools 
So that's why there is a formula. Okay. Then for round, 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 making round values, like we have twelve point three, ten point five. 9.6 9.1 for making round values we use round formula round number of digits that how till how many numbers uh, you want to round the value so I am giving them 0 or you can choose 2 digits are, are, are you able to choose, say, um, uh, 0, 5, 10, 15 in multiples of 5? 0, 5, 10, 15. Like, like um, 5.5, 10, 15.5? Uh, uh, you want to say on single decimal position if you want to do. Like, like in Canada, we don't have pennies anymore. The lowest is five cents. Okay. So if we want, so anytime we buy something, it has to be uh, in in increments of five cents. Mm, you can cap that values. Ceiling floor. Okay. You can give the significance to them. Can it round off to say if it's like a uh, dollar and one cents, it will round off to one dollar. Or if it's a dollar and uh, three cents, it will round off to a dollar and five cents. Dollar and uh, no, no, no. It is it is not called uh, rounding the values because it uh, it is for digits and for five cents there is no digit. It is uh, five and uh, five will be in single digit, na? so we can use this function only. Not any round function will be there. Oh, I see. Okay. Because you have to cap the value for five cents. Yeah. Let us try ten point one, ten point five. Oh no, no point six and we want to cap the value on 0. Point. no 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 this will be 1 2 and this will be 6 6 and then 5 cents we need so we can use a ceiling number and significance will be 0 point zero five okay okay here is your result that's what you are asking yeah except the um the ten point one two would round down to uh ten point one zero uh ten point one zero so you can use yeah. floor function same. It will not complete okay. 0 0.05. Yeah. See? Okay. So uh, basically it is not uh, a round, it is uh, capping. Round is used for digits only, full digits. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. So in round you can see that we are doing, it is automatically detected <laughs> After 5, it will increase your value. Before 5, it will decrease your value. So, uh, we have round down function also here. In case of round down, it will decrease your value always. And okay. now, in round up, It will 
increase your value. It will increase your value. We have one more function int for the same purpose, but int acts like round down. Int means integer. Basically, its functionality is to remove the decimal position, whatever it is. So, int remove the decimal position, so gets the uh, acts like round down. Then we have trunk form. Uh, we have trunk for same purpose. Trunk number, the number of digits. So, trunk, int and round down behaves same. Okay. So, this much function we What's use. the difference between trunk and integer? Same thing? Same thing. Okay. Not a difference. Now, let's see more mathematical functions. We have power function as I told you earlier about power. So if I want to know the 5 power 2 is how much. So it will show you. Okay. So we have power function for that. We have pi function for getting the pi value. Mm -hmm. okay. You can multiply with radius and do whatever, there are a lot of calculation with pi. Then sum you already know. For a square root, uh, you have seen for 16 square root. We have function sqrt. Square root. Then for multiplication we are also having a function like product. It is simple multiplication. You choose number it will multiply. Okay. But let's see, there, there is one more function, sum product, which is the combination of sum and product. So, let's say we have rate and quantity of something. We want to know the amount, some items we have. This red between function also here. Red to red. So in amount we uh, generally what we do, we multiply the values. Okay. okay. Then total it. So you will get the grand total. Uh, a total of that. But you don't want to do this much of calculation and then you want to know this one. You want in one go it should display. So how will we, we have a function for that? Some product. Some product what you do you can directly give your arrays range. Rate and quantity I have given it or separated by comma. You can use two, three and much more. 
the red color, you will get the same. Okay. So we have some product here. Then we have some it like uh, we want to know the amount of these product that how much total amount because it is repetitive. So I want to know that how much amount of rice has been sold. So we have sum with means uh, sum with if condition. So in sum if you give the range first where you want to set the criteria. So items range I have chosen then what is my criteria? I want the amount for rice only I have chosen then the sum range okay the value which to be sum I will get the cumulative total of that each product well, that's pretty handy yes so in sum if we have one condition then we have we have some ifs with multiple conditions like uh, the amount should be greater than 1000 rice should be there and the amount should be greater than 1000 ok so what we will do we will use some ifs. In some if we give the range some range in the last but in some ifs we give the sum range in advance. So we have given the sum range then you have criteria range 1 and criteria like criteria range 1 is this one then you have this criteria oops sorry criteria range 1 and with comma criteria mean is rise then the second criteria I was talking about great the amount should be greater than 1000 so I need to choose the criteria range first then criteria new I can give the cell reference or we can directly give here greater than less than it will be given like this ok in inverted commas ok it accept the criteria like uh, text so uh, the reference will not be there you uh, specify criteria by this way only greater than thousand less than thousand not equal to thousand like this so, something mistake I have done this is criteria is what criteria is to D it's ok ok some range is not full so, this range should be so now I have the values which are greater than 1000 I added total here so if we want to check this greater than 1000 so only the true values I want I am specifying the formula only true value for true value then I am total then total so same value ok 
Okay. So in some way you can specify two, three, four, n number of conditions there. Likewise, you have count tables. Count if. Count if counts your value. Well, so it's very similar to some if uh, you yes, just have yes. uh, one condition. Yes, 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 yes. So we have count if. In count if we give range and criteria because we don't have to sum the value, we need to count the values only. So I am uh, choosing the product. And then criteria only. Something mistake. Okay. This size. So rise is three times here. Okay. Then we have count tips for multiple conditions. How many rice have, how much of rice have more than, greater than thousand amount. So we can use count tips, criteria range 1. then criteria 1 and criteria range 2 was amount and the criteria 2 was this one greater than 1000 but we have done mistake amount ok So that's how we do with count if. Okay. Uh, okay. There, I need to be uh, need to fix this value because it is sliding down when I have tried. That's why it's not appearing. Now it's okay. So count if sum if. Likewise, you have average. Average for taking average of any number. Like in amount, we want to know the average. So there is an average of that. But by product, we want to know the average. So for that, average if average if I choose the range first, then criteria. criteria then we have average range so this is the average of rice, sugar, wheat and tea for multiple conditions you have average ifs in which you are in starting you have to give like some ifs you have to give average range in advance criteria range 1 so criteria range 1 is this and the criteria is this one then criteria range 2 is your amount then criteria range, criteria 2 so it will show you the average we need to fix this one so this is the average fix so some may count a Average if submits count tips averages. 
then I specify how to use count function. So if you do count and you are counting this range which are having text, it will not count anything. But when you select, there is a counting. So this count function will count the numbers only, not the text. It ignore text. If you want to count the uh, numbers and text both, so you need to use count A. Okay. So it will show the result. Count A means count alphabets. Okay. Alphanumeric actually. Likewise when we select this one, so there is a one text. So total count is returning us 10 but for same range count will return 9. Okay. Difference is alphabetical value. Text value. Okay. Okay. Then in count if sum if you can use one more thing. I have a question about the count. If the uh number is zero, is this still considered a count? Uh, uh, in what? Uh, number? If like under under rate, you got the numbers 15, 44, 65. What if the number is zero? Is that considered a count? See, count means there is a value. So if I count this one, it will show you okay, yes, the yes. line. It will count. Okay, still zero is still considered a number then. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. One more uh, thing we do, uh, you can do with this type of conditions, like with count if I want to know that how many characters are. Uh, let us take different list for that example. So we will use count if count if for text uh, counting we have like I want to know that how many uh, items are started with letter S. Okay, beginning with S letter. So we can give condition like S and star. Star means the starting should be S and after that whatever should be there. No matter. Okay. okay. So six characters are there. Now you want to know that how many letters are ending with H. How many items are ending with H. So you fix a star in beginning and H after that means a star means whatever. Any value. So whatever will be there it should end with H. Okay. So there are six values. Then I want to know that uh, how many items are containing double E means either it is in starting or ending we don't know wherever it is it should consider okay means in starting any value and ending any value but there should be double E in the starting beginning or in between no matter both side starts so start can uh, uh, represent n number of text okay it can be 0 it can be 100 anything but for a specific one digit we have one more character like the name should be like this and I don't know there is a or u so I will put a question mark here. 
Okay. It is just for one digit. Because I am not confirmed with the spelling. Now how many characters are like this? Three. Okay. If uh, I change any one of U, E, any of the character. So it will consider. That means it is optional. Any digit can come here. But the starting should be like this and ending should be like this. It is just for digit. So you can use this star and question mark according to your need. Okay. Okay. So we have done, I guess, lot of functions today. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Uh, one more formula I want to show. Which formula it was? Like you have to print you are using filter and you are taking print out of some persons like I need Sandeep and Sujit only. So if you want to know the total of this you have to select the uh, column and you have to see here. But you want some formula which can calculate the visible values so there is a formula you can do all the things I am putting here total with break of one line because if I don't do it it will consider in this list in filter so we usually use sum for that so total is 866 but See, I am using here one more formula, subtotal. Okay. In subtotal, first you choose what calculation you want to do. So I want to do sum. There is a 9 code. Just double click on that or type the code. Then take the whole reference. So it is showing me both of formulas are showing me the exact result but when I go turn on the filter like Harish so it will show me the exact value of Harish like this okay it will show you it will show you the visible total only okay visible total average count anything okay so you can use this if you have a large list and you want to take printouts with the total. So you need not to do a total for every time. You just fix one formula and it will be available when you filter. Okay. Okay. So we have done so much formulas today. The rest of uh, all we will do tomorrow. Maths and date and time. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, very useful to know all these four different formulas. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, then. Goodbye. Okay, so I'll see you tomorrow. Oh. Goodbye.